Jerry. What's up, man? How you? I'm chilling. Slow motion. All right. I got, I got a question for you. So, um, Nate Jones, I know you remember Nate Jones, the mm -hmm. heavyweight. He comes out and he says that uh, Earl Spence got buckled by Floyd and Spawn. Mm -hmm. Said he almost dropped him. Yeah. Earl comes out and says, you know, that, you know, that never happened. Do people make a big deal about sparring stories? Like, what have you seen in sparring? I've seen a lot in sparring. I actually, uh, you know, I've been in the game since I was three years old. I'm 42. Um, I've been around a lot of great fighters like Nate Miller, Ivan Robinson. You know, I come up out of the dungeon with Bozy, you know, with Boots, Jerron Ennis. Uh, so I've seen a lot of good sparring. You know, Melzer Teller. Uh, sparring, you can't take too much out of it. Um, sparring is sparring. You in there to learn and practice on things that you need to, you know, work on. So... Guys get dropped in sparring all the time, um, but to them to make for them to make a big dollar out of it, it means nothing. Look who he's sparring, Floyd Mayweather, one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time. And you got dropped by Floyd. That's not nothing to be ashamed of. Now, it seems like we're starting to hear a lot more than sparring stories. You know, mm -hmm. before what happened in sparring stays in sparring. Stays in sparring, yeah. And we heard Earl. We heard a rumor that Earl touched up Floyd. Yeah. We heard a couple people say that. Uh -huh. Um. How often have you seen A-level fighters get touched up by young fighters? Plenty, plenty. I've heard stories of, uh, you know, my dad, Jerry the Bull Martin. He's been in camps with, you know, Michael Spinks. He's been there with Muhammad Ali. He was telling me that Muhammad Ali used to get touched up in sparring. But you weren't doing that to him in no fight. It's like I said, in sparring, you're taking more risks. You're on headgear. So you're willing to, you know, expose yourself a little more. Um, but it means nothing because when the fight is on, you're going to be more you know, aware and more conscious of what's going on in the ring. And sparring, you just you just practice and to work on what you need to work on for the fight. Have you ever seen a, a A level fighter or a world champion level fighter put on the ass? Um not really. Uh, maybe you might get touched up, but if you really get put on your ass, you hardly see that. And that's why if you remember when you had uh Oscar de la Hoya, fighters like that, um uh what's it? Uh they would, they would pay sparring partners. They'd be like, yo, if you could drop me, I'm going to pay you an extra $1,500. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it don't, it don't happen too often. A lot of times when you call a guy in the camp, you know, uh, your sparring partners, you already been training. you already been in camp for a while. So then you start bringing sparring partners in to help you get ready for the fight. But you've already been training. A lot of times the sparring partners, if they don't have a fight ready, they're really not in shape. They got to box their way in the shape. I've even heard stories of uh, Manny Pacquiao also, same way. He would tell sparring partners, you know, I'll give extra two thousand dollars if you could drop me, because they know already the sparring partners that they bringing in, the A list, the A list sparring partners, but they may not be exactly in fight shape yet. Mm. You know, where you already been in camp, you training, you getting ready for a fight, you're in fight shape, you getting ready to fight. Uh, your sparring partner maybe just just fought a little while ago, or maybe got a fight some some time down the road, so you're not on, in tip top condition. So for them to drop an A list, you know. Guy is, uh, I don't see that happening too many times, but of course anything can happen.